Well, hello everybody. Welcome to, yes, what I think will probably be the final episode of That Thursday Thing. Um, and I'll talk about that a little bit more, but today is Thursday, June 17th, the third Thursday of the month. Coming into summer, officially just around the corner by a few days, getting excited for a whole bunch of different things. Um, and, you know, it's always a time of kind of change and uh, thinking about what's ahead. So I'll be talking about that in just a couple of seconds here as uh, as we get some more ladies on. So yeah, we're going to get started here and I'll chat a little bit more about kind of why today is probably going to be the last that Thursday thing. Don't worry though, there's, there's going to be different things coming up. So when one thing, you know, ends, another thing typically takes its place. So well, let's get going so that we have lots of time to play, as you may have seen in the little ad that I put up this morning. We are going to make a shaker page, and I know that there was like, what? What's a shaker page? So we're going to have some fun doing that, but it might take a little bit longer than uh, some of the other layouts that we've made together. So um, I want to get started. Before we get started, though, I do want to remind you about the summer mother load, and this is kind of one of the reasons that this is going to be the last that Thursday thing. So if you like joining me for Facebook lives, this kind of, you know, just kind of chatting with me, seeing what I do, watching my process, that kind of thing, then you, you really might want to check out the summer mother load because all of July, every day in July, July 1st to 31st, we are going to make a layout a day and we are going to have a video a day, and we're going to have a prize a day. So it's only $31 Canadian, so my friends in the States, it'll probably be like, I don't know, $5 for you by the time the, uh, the currency gets changed over. Uh, and I will put that link back down in the comments for you, but you know, that's really going to take up a big chunk of the month of July. Every morning I will be live, um, we'll be doing a layout together. Uh, or if I'm teaching you a technique or something, I might have a little bit of a pre-recorded video for you to watch. So, so if you enjoy this type of Facebook Live, uh, where I'm just kind of chatting at you and sharing things with you, then I really think you're going to enjoy the summer mother load. And the reason that I wanted to remind you about it is because I'll be closing registration for that on June 30th because I want to make sure that everybody's in the Facebook group and has access and all that kind of stuff before we get started. And then once we're started, we're going. So a layout a day, that's what load stands for, lay out a day, load. Um, so we're going to get rolling with it and we're just going to keep on keeping on. So if you want to join me, don't forget to do that. Starts two weeks from today. Make sure you register. Okay, so yeah, that's one of the reasons that um, I'm going to be kind of stopping the That Thursday thing. Um, you know, we've been doing it for about six months now, January through June. Uh, July, I'm not going to have a lot of Facebook Lives on the Organized and Creative Mom page. There'll be the course and my other courses, the Scrap Your Stash and the Insiders. August, I'm going to take a little bit of a break, a little bit of a vacation with the family. If we can get out of the province, great. If not, it'll be a bit of a staycation, but I'm just going to do a lot of relaxing. And then as we move into the fall, I'll be sharing some other ways. Uh, well, I'll be sharing some other things. I'll be sharing things with you in other ways. Let's put it that way. So I'm not too sure, you know, what the schedule will be, uh, what, uh, what days, times, that kind of thing. So I have to kind of work that out. But don't worry, I will definitely be back continuing to do Facebook Lives in some sort of capacity, okay? So put your mind at ease there. Um, Linda is saying, will it be recorded if we can't jump in live? Yes, so even though, and I assume, um, Linda, that you're talking about the summer mother load videos. So yes, every morning at 10 o'clock my time, 10 o'clock mountain time, I will be live and there'll be the video. It will be recorded and then you can watch it in the Facebook group after the broadcast is over. And then it will also be uploaded into the uh, course classroom, the, the platform that I use. So you can watch it anytime there. You can go back and reference it, etc. 
So yeah, if you can't make it that morning to join in with us, you can watch it later on in the afternoon or into the evening whenever you are going to do your layout. Okay, so definitely that's a really good point. Okay, let's, are you ready? Let's jump in. I've been chatting with you here for about six or seven minutes. So let's, let me flip you over and tell you a little bit about what, uh, what we're going to do. Sorry, let's flip this back. Oh, yeah. There we go. Okay, so now you should be able to see my table and we are going to work with this beautiful botanical burst and you probably know that, you know, every year around this time, Creative Memory comes out with kind of a mix and match collection. Last year it was Fresh Fusion. Uh, the year before, I think it was Rainbow Rush. We've also have uh, Blend, and, Blend and Bloom, I think it was called. So it's typically kind of, you know, a similar paper packs, but in different kind of color combinations. And uh, I want to work with the pink today because I don't get a, a, a lot of chances to work with pink, having boys and things. Um, and if you didn't see, this morning uh, I'm up on the Creative Scrapbooker magazine website, uh, or blog, I guess, and I created this sketch. And this was using the green botanical burst, right? So the green papers, and then some of the green and blue embellishments. And when I was printing out the photos for this layout, this, these, this is one of the trees in our front yard, I don't know for sure what it's called. We call it our snowball tree or our, our May tree because it, you know, it only blooms for about 10 days in May. But I also took some pictures of our um, cherry tree. And again, just beautiful, very fleeting blooms. You know, it comes up only, you know, about again, that seven to 10 days. But the colors were just so wonderful and I wanted to use it uh, in a layout with this botanical burst. Now, the reason I'm thinking about a shaker page is because in each of the packs, there is this fun paper that has a sort of a reverse wreath. So it's got the design all the way around kind of a blank area in the center. And I thought that what would be fun would be to cut that center area out and create a shaker page with it. So I'm going to do that with my pink paper and because I love plaid, I'm going to use this one as the sort of background for it. So basically we're going to use two pieces of paper. Um, I do have, and again, this is only because I've uh, received samples early so I can do, um, you know, things for the magazine and, and the blogs and stuff. So I do already have a package of the embellishments. I know that they are still out of stock. They're still waiting for them to come in to the warehouse. But I thought I would still share this idea with you. And then as soon as you get these in your hot little hands, you can replicate it. If you want to get started on something like this right away, you you don't have the botanical burst embellishments you could definitely punch some flowers and leaves uh, you can go back through some other collections that had flowers and leaves and it will be just fine um, I'm also going to use I'm pretty sure I'm going to use the must-have laser titles pack two as you can see there I have pack number one of four and two of four. And number two uh, has some of these pinks and uh, some of the other botanical burst colors. So I think I'm gonna be using those, okay? The other thing we're going to need is some kind of plastic. Now I have a couple of page protectors here. This is a super old one. You can see that it was all bent and everything. I believe this is yeah, this is a seven inch size page protector. So the really old ones, but you could easily use a regular uh, page protector. Uh, and if you use this idea with a, a smaller circle, you can even get away with using the peekaboo pockets. So our largest size of peekaboo pockets is six by 12. Basically, you'd be cutting one of those down. So basically any kind of uh, the photo safe plastic will work for this. I would recommend page protector, pocket page, or the peekaboo pockets for this. And then we're going to need something to cut our circle. So I pulled these out um, just to kind of see what size I might want. Initially, I thought it would probably be the jumbo circle, 
but when I looked at the template of the jumbo circle, it actually is going to take a lot of these little details from around the edge away. So I didn't want to do that. Uh, but you could use the jumbo circle. Uh, and then I got out my templates for my small size circles. Yeah, so I'm, I tried the regular size uh, circle templates from the custom cutting system. And this large, the largest one, so the largest circle with the blue blade around it will give us a six and a half inch. So that's, you know, not quite that amount. So again, I understand that the circle cutter is, um, is out right now, but I'm gonna use the circle cutter and I'm gonna cut a seven and a half inch, okay? So this is the six and a half. I'm gonna go just a, an inch bigger. And so it's just gonna be a slightly bigger circle. But use what you have. If you don't have any of those to cut out a circle, you could do a couple of things. And after you see me work with this, you'll kind of see what I mean. You could just poke your uh, scissors right through the center of the page and then kind of, you know, fussy cut. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle because when you look at this, it's not a perfect circle on the inside. So really what you, you'd be wanting to do would be just, uh, you know, having a nice uh, open shape. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to back it with the um, paper, uh, sorry, the page protector, and then sandwich it all together on our background sheet. Okay. So because I'm using a seven inch circle, I'm gonna make a seven inch circle. I'm gonna keep my large size page protector out. And we're gonna do a couple of things before we cut. So first of all, I wanna cut just a little bit off of each side of this, um, of this uh, paper so that when I place it onto the background paper, there's going to be a little bit of a border. So I'm just gonna cut a half inch off of each side. And I want to make sure, because I'm gonna keep them and use them for something else, so I wanna make sure that I get a 12 inch, that I'm gonna turn it opposite and cut another 12 inch. And then when I cut the sides, or I guess you know the top and bottom are the other two sides, uh, it's gonna be slightly smaller. So you see how I've I'm gonna have two nice long ones and then I'm gonna have two slightly smaller strips. So we're gonna save those, we're gonna use them, all right? And now we have um, a piece that's going to have a nice uh, look when we put it on our background paper. Okay, so that's the first thing I wanted to do. Second thing is I wanna talk about how you can kind of center a circle on your, um, on your page when you're using the circle cutter because you know with the templates basically we can you know place the template on top of the page kind of see where we're going uh you know slide the template underneath move it around as needed and then we know that when we cut around it it's in the right spot so with the circle cutter it's a little bit more difficult to do that because you don't have um you don't have those kind of templates ahead of time. Sorry, I'm just grabbing a pencil here. Okay, so I'm gonna center my page onto our 13 by 13 inch cutting mat, and I'm just gonna mark the center. So I'm using my ruler, any ruler will do, it doesn't have to be the zero centering. And I'm gonna mark the six inch, you know, just a light mark there. I'm gonna turn it and mark six inches here. I'm looking up at my screen to see if that's even. Okay, so I'm just drawing like a little cross in the center. And the reason that I'm doing that is that because I'm going to use these um, black lines on either side of the housing, and I'm also going to look down um, and try to center it between this window, okay? So first of all, let me set it to seven, did I see seven and a half? Let's do 7.2 because again, the circle cutter is in two, two tenth increments. So it's not seven and a quarter, half, quarter, and full. It's 7.2, 7 7.4, 7 7.6, 7.8, .7 if that makes sense, okay? So I'm gonna set it to 7.2. And again, 
I always want to remind you that the white markings along the bottom are the markings for when you're cutting the circle because you can see the little blade image there. The gray markings or black markings on the top are for drawing so you can see the little um, pen or you know yeah pen marking there. Okay. All right. So now I've got it set at 7.2. I'm going to look down from above at both of those black marks and I want to make sure, sorry, you might see the top of my head here for a second. I want to make sure that those uh, black marks are aligned. And then I also want to look down to see if I can see my uh, horizontal um, pencil mark and I think that now looks like it's pretty much in the center again you're gonna see my head for just a second here okay so that's how I would center it okay then you go ahead and cut so to cut push down on this blue dome then this little white circle engages the blade and you just go all the way around Okay, so now you can save this for another use. We're not going to be using this piece right now. But now we have our little pocket. So now I think you get the idea that we're going to trim down our page protector to fit behind here. We're going to fill our little page protector with some fun little confetti and glue it all together and then we've got a fantastic background page. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm just going to get my trimmer out so I can trim down my page protector. And I know that my circle was 7.2, so if I make it, let's let's do it eight and a half, just, just to be on the safe side. I'm gonna take that piece away eight and a half, that piece away. And then we can see that that's going to be, that will be completely behind the circle, um, but it's, it's, it's not gonna stick out behind the edges, if that makes sense, okay? All right, so those are the big steps done. Now what we need to do is we need to seal this up I'm just going to use some regular tape runner adhesive. And this is all going to get sealed together. So you don't have to worry about your, your confetti sort of leaking out. Um, it's all going to get sealed up. But we just want to seal it on three sides right now. And I went ahead and made some confetti, so to speak. But let's talk about that for a second. So the new piece by piece mini trio punch set came out last month, May, um, with the idea that when you punch these individual little pieces, you can put the pieces together to create all kinds of little critters. Uh, but what I decided to do was to actually punch out all of these small shapes, the heart, moon, and then the two little dots, out of some coordinating paper. So I've got the shell shimmer. I've got some pink from my stash. That was the, the baby pink um, from a couple years back. And then this was some raspberry from my stash as well. And as you know, raspberry is gone. But if you have the taffy, let me see, hang on. Just grabbing it. So if you have the taffy, you know, the taffy and the shell would be beautiful for something like this. And of course, if you have a different paper that you're going to use, um, you know, that's just choose uh, cardstock colors or punch them out from some of these other papers. You know, if you have uh, some scraps left from the other uh, tone on tone papers in the, in the pack, definitely you could punch out the little shapes from there and then it will all work together. So I just took some scraps and just punched it out, just down the, the, you know, just down the line there. And then because it was a floral um, page that I'm doing, and this one had 
hearts, circles, and moons, I dug out a really, really old mini, mini, mini circle punch. I think this one, it's got a frog, a fish, a butterfly, and a flower. And I just went in with the little flower and punched out a bunch of those flowers too. So you could go ahead and make up, you know, your confetti in whatever sort of colors and sizes that you want. Pop it into your little package. And again, this is all gonna get sealed down. Okay, and then we're gonna put it behind. Now we're gonna put uh, the tape runner on the back side of the closed pouch. Because it's transparent, you can probably just see a real mess of adhesive but I'm just uh, adding adhesive on the outside now. I'll center that over our circle. Ta-da! Isn't that fun? I love that look, I love it. So, and then we're gonna sandwich it on here too, okay? Now, um, I've seen some shaker pages where you actually lift up this front page, the top page with some uh, foam squares but because this is gonna go in your album anyways you know I don't think you necessarily need to do that okay so we're just gonna go ahead now and again you can definitely seal down those extra areas where you think the confetti might leak out and then just a little bit around the edges of the paper itself I think that's good and then because I'm using plaid you guys know that I love plaid and I love the combination of plaid and flowers I just am looking at that plaid design to center my uh, my page and then I thought well I, I don't want these little strips to go to waste so I thought what I would do is just layer those strips because we made sure that we were going to uh, keep them out and you can just layer those if you wanted to to create like another sort of layer of border and again that would just be another sort of I don't know what would you call it like another assurance of having your uh, shaker bits all enclosed and they're not going to they're not going to to leak out so I think that's what I'll probably do and then just you know trim those off. So that's the basic sort of idea of the page. Uh, you know, cutting out the center there, really focusing on all those beautiful blooms around the edges, um, having some fun interest inside, and then probably putting my photos something like this. Okay, uh, I could also you know kind of ex I'm just going to take these off for now so that it's doesn't get in the way you could also kind of group them off to one side uh, you know opposite corners both along the bottom whatever works for you okay but I'm kind of thinking that's what I'm going to do so I still get lots of the beautiful flowers this is becoming a hugely floral based page <laughs> Uh, now, I haven't done anything with the green that's in here, so I think I'll probably really try to embellish with a lot of leaves. My leaf punch is not here right now, uh, so if you had the leaf punch, I think that that would be a great thing to, uh, to pull out because you could just punch a bunch of leaves and really uh, contrast, you know, the... Um, what you've got going on here. So I think I would probably just really add a lot of leaves in here to sort of separate the pages from the photos. And then, you know, I don't know, I, I think maybe some of these uh, might be a little too big, but some of the smaller ones, some of the foiled leaves, you know, you could kind of tuck in there as well getting to be all thumbs now, you know, something like that. So you don't need a ton of embellishments, but I really like the way that the, the greens, uh, you know, separate and pick up 
the, the other colors in the background there. Okay, so I think something like that. Now let's talk about uh, title. What time are we at? 227. Let me, let me keep you for just another couple of minutes. Uh, so there's a lot of different titles in here. Something like that love might work here. That's a lot of pink, but uh, make me smile. Some of these might not work because, again, they're really kind of focused on, yeah, like love you. I, I, I like the idea of love, but I don't know that I would have love you. There's a little so much, so much love, something like that. Not sure if I will use these or not. The other thing... I would love it if I had something that said, you know, beauty or um, snapshots that might work. Home family. Yeah, there's there's not a ton that I would necessarily pull out of there. Uh, it might be, I might be better off with something a little bit more generic from the first pack. Um, laughter, right now, home, family best day ever. I think, yeah, like picture perfect might, might work really well. And I could back that with uh, just a little bit of white cardstock so that it would stand out. Okay. Something like that. And then I could add my little gems. I could also, where'd my punch go? Here it is. I could also punch some more of those little hearts and, um, you know, that were inside, inside my confetti and kind of use those to, um, to accent my clusters as well. Okay. So it might be like a little heart there. The circle might be the, you know, the center of the flower, little hearts there, that kind of thing. Okay. So I think that's probably the direction that I'll be going. I will adhere my strips around the edges to totally seal down my shaker contents. Then I'll add in my photos and probably focus mostly on the green leaves as my embellishments. And I think that picture perfect will be my title, either just off to the side like this or just down below whichever way I decide. Okay. So that is going to be the page. And I just love the idea that, you know, you're going to see all of these little bits. Uh, you know, if you've got glitter paper, shimmer paper, that's going to be really pretty. Uh, of course, our gems are self adhesive. So even though the idea of sequins and gems uh, is sounds great for confetti, um, it will stick when it's inside there. So don't use the gems because it's going to stick. So see what you've got in your punch, see what you've got in your stash. You know, you might have some old confetti or some um, little glitter sequins. You could use glitter, although that might be messy. So it really is, um, you know, it really is up to you what you put inside it. But I think that um, all of those little punches are quite pretty. So I think that's a fun idea. Oops, sorry. <laughs> there I am. I think that's a fun idea. And I would love to see it if you create a shaker page um, for yourself. You know, I know we've talked about shaker cards in the past. I've shown lots of different examples of those. Uh, again, whether they're raised up off the surface or just flat. Um the peekaboo pockets are great for, you know, those small project uh, shaker pages, that sort of thing. Uh, I've also done things where we have a shaker embellishment, you know, maybe it's a circle that's cut out in the center and just the center part has the confetti in it. So, so those ideas about, you know, shaker uh, really make for a fun page. It's not too difficult. You just kind of have to think about your supplies. Uh, really, we were able to put it together here in about 20 minutes and I just have to adhere the last few things so it's not difficult it's not that time consuming uh, and it's great for a fun and different sort of page so oh thanks guys yeah I, I, I love kind of coming up with those ideas and sharing them with you so like I said I would love it if you create a shaker page or a shaker card or a shaker tag or whatever I would love to see what you come up with and you know again even though I was using you know the new punch 
I'm sure you've got stuff in your stash that uh, that you can use it's some old punches that kind of thing um, even a little hole punch a little handheld hole punch is great for you know uh, punching out little confetti bits you know just sit down it doesn't take too too long just sit down and punch a bunch and keep it in a little tray like I did or on a little piece of paper and just slide it into your pocket your see-through pocket and it will be super fun for anybody who's looking okay so I'm gonna let you go thank you for joining me um, I really hope that I'm gonna see lots of you sign up for the summer mother load and join me every day in July I think it's going to be lots of fun and I think you know once we we start creating there's going to be so many ideas in the Facebook group you're just gonna be thrilled with the amount of inspiration that you're going to get not just from me but from all of the other folks posting their versions of the layouts uh, the layouts are not always a sketch based they're prompt based so you know your interpretation of a prompt is going to be completely different than somebody else's so we're going to have such a wide range of uh, of layouts it's going to be awesome okay so i do hope that you join me i'd love to see you every day in july and if i don't then i will definitely look for you again for some facebook lives later into august and into early september okay all right guys thanks for everything i will see you guys on the page uh, on the creative life scrapbooking page on the creative scrapbooker magazine page all of the different places that you'll find me have a great summer and I will see you again soon. Okay, bye for now.